Vader here, aka Peer Freak Out 10, bringing you another episode of the Mother Review Show, where the good movies are always reviewed. Okay, back into our movie review, and I continue with my summer movie reviews, baby, hell yes. Alright, time to bring some more sunshine into everybody's summer with some more movies. Alright, now on today's episode... I'm going to explore a genre that I may or may not have talked about. I've done so many videos that it's hard to keep track. But we're going to be looking at a specific genre and the comedy genre that really defines summer for me because this activity, I think, really, um, really puts me in the summer mood and really just... It brings out the summery feeling in me. And that's what I love about this particular genre. And what is that, you may ask? Those are road trips. Now, road trips can be seen as either good or bad because so many people have said they're good and so many people have said they're bad. But either way, they still bring out the summery feeling for me because so many people do them during the summer. And on top of that, to me, summer is about being with someone, whether it's your friends, your family, or even your girlfriend. Summer can find ways to bring people together in many, many different ways. Now, in terms of it being a positive or negative experience, positive because you can get together with that particular person, drive across country, see the landscapes, um, and do some things you would never be able to do on a plane because a plane would just take a couple minutes to get there and you'd be like, wow, I'm there. But yeah. So the, those are some of the good. Um, being able to get together with a family and whatnot. Um, but there's also some negativity to that because while it's a good experience, like your car can break down, you might not know the way, you may get lost or you may lose your wallet, and you may have to stay in crummy hotels along the way that may have chest hair, really dark chest hair from old men that haven't bothered to clean up while well, they left. <coughs> <coughs> I had to do that image because it's true. So many people have... Um, <coughs> I'm okay. But anyway get my thoughts together, and films, I think, really show that for me. Films just really bring out that to me, and it's an activity that I would love to do in the future. And I think a lot of films really do that for me, as I said, but I think one particular film really shows that one vacation, even with all the mishaps that have happened, it could still lead to a great vacation. And what film is that, you may ask? National Lampoon's Vacation. What is there to say about this film? Now, I know when this film was being made, the idea for this film came up when John Hughes, uh, who, who did the screenplay for this, came up with the idea during the blizzard of 1979, where um, he did, like, um, where he wrote it called Vacation 58 for an issue of National Lampoon, and, and like, he tried to get it to Hollywood, but they wouldn't but someone wouldn't do it. Um, and he actually brought it to Jeff Katzenberg. Uh, Katzenberg. Um, I think this was before he went to do DreamWorks. Yeah. Um, and they said it would never make a movie, but he went to uh, Warner Brothers, who actually took the film. And I know that it was originally going to be Disneyland they were going to go to, but they scrapped that because of legal issues. Um, and... The one of the main mascot of Marty the Moose, this guy right here, um, is reminiscent of Mickey Mouse. Um, he's pretty much the equivalent of Mickey Mouse because they got the idea for him. And the film came out. It was a big hit. It had a it had a small budget of of fifteen million. So it's a pretty, it was a pretty big risk. It made like sixty one point four million at the box office, and. It did extremely well. It has a 93% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, did Roger Ebert like the film? I... Let me check my PDA. Um... I 
I remember them reviewing it. I, uh, he didn't like Christmas Vacation? Wow. But it did extremely well. It has a good percent on Rotten Tomatoes. So many critics seem to enjoy it. And what's weird about me with this franchise is that this was not the first one I saw. What's weird, because after this film was so successful, um, they did sequels. National Lampoon's European Vacation, um, Christmas Vacation, and Vegas Vacation. And Christmas Vacation was the first one I saw because it was around Christmas. And that was the one that um, became one of my all-time favorite Christmas films. And... And as I go, and when I got older, I was allowed to watch this one, one because um, out of all the vacation films, this is the first one. But it's also the only one in the franchise to have the R rating, which I was actually kind of like wowed by. Because later on, the series would get more PG thirteen and PG, like try to appeal to family and whatnot. But I will say, out of all the vacation films, to me, this is the best one out of them all. I think this one, to me, is the funniest of them all. Um, and it's, to me, one of my favorite road films of all time. It's definitely up in, like, the top ten. So, yeah, definitely really like this film. Um, and I just remember, I always remember the first time I saw this film with my brother, and we laughed and laughed and had such a fun night watching this film. And to me, this is a film that I hold near and dear to my heart because it always brings out the summer feeling in me. It always brings out um, what I love about being on the road. But I'll get into all that later. But anyway, this film was made back in 1983, and this is directed by uh, Harold Ramis. And for those who don't know Harold Ramis before this, he directed Caddyshack, um, another film with uh, Chevy Chase. Um, he also would go on to direct... Um, what was that one film he did? He would be in Ghostbusters, of course. Um, he, um... I know he did. He did Groundhog Day. He did Stripes. Uh, Ghostbusters 2 he helped out on. Uh, and he did Analyze Dat with... Uh, Robert De Niro, Billy Crystal, um, he did Multiplicity, um, at, did he help out as good as it gets? Yeah. Um, he helped out with Airheads, he helped it write Rover Dangerfield, another film I enjoy, um. Joy, did he do this one particular film I'm thinking of? Why am I thinking he did that film? Yeah, he did. He wrote Back to School. That was the screenplay for that film. But, yeah. Um, so, very capable director. Very, very good writer. And this film, to me, really... Sh this was, to me, my introduction. Well, I shouldn't say my introduction. Did he help out with the other one, Christmas Vacation? Uh, no, he didn't. He, uh, no, he didn't. Um, he didn't write it. John Hughes did. He wrote all of these, so, yeah. But, yeah, th as I said, this was my, well, I wouldn't say, because I saw Caddyshack around the same time as this, so those two were my introduction to him. But, out of them all, this is the funniest, I gotta say. As I said, this is the funniest, because I think Harold Ramis really knows how to really exploits, goes to the limit with this film as opposed to the other ones besides Christmas Vacation. And I think that his direction really shows that this series was meant to be R-rated even though they took it the PG-13 route. Um, this series was meant to be R. But I think like the studio got involved in something. But yeah. Um, but anyway, moving on. The film also stars uh, Chevy Chase, who was also in uh, Caddyshack. Um, he, he would later be in the sequels to this. Um, he was in Nothing But Trouble, a very good film that I don't think gets the credit it deserves. He was in Dirty Work for a little cameo. Um, um, he was also in... Um, 
forget what else he was in. Um, he also had Beverly D'Angelo, who I only know from this and the sequels. Um, you have Brent, you have Imogene Coca, who I don't know anything about. Um, you have Randy Quaid in this film, who would later become known for this character of Cousin Eddie. Um, he was also in uh, The Adventures of Pluto Nash. Yeah, um, he was in. Rocky and Bullwinkle, the movie, um, he was also in, um, um, he was in a lot of stuff, um, he had a quick cameo on Caddyshack 2, which I know a lot of people don't like Caddyshack 2, I think it's alright, I mean, it's, I mean, it's definitely easy to see that it was trying to appeal more to kids, but it still was an alright sequel, um, definitely not up to par with the first one, but still good. You also have cameos in this film. You have John Candy as a quick cameo in this as one of the security guards. Um, Eugene Levy in a young role. I was like, holy hell, it's Eugene Levy. Um, with, you could tell by his curly, as heck, black hair, no, without the glasses. Um, and so many other people have cameos in this film. But as I said, I love this movie. I, I loved it ever since I first saw it. And... It's to me one of those films that really defines what a road move, what a road trip, even though so many so much stuff can happen, can really bring, can really do for someone or the family. But I'll get into that later. But anyway, the basic plot of the film is basically this: we meet um, Clark Griswold, played by Chevy Chase, who um, is a family man trying to bring his family closer together. Um, his family, played by Anthony Michael Hall, who who is Rusty, who would later go on to be in stuff like Sixteen Candles. He was also in, um, he was in Edward Scissorhands, um, and I don't know the daughter's name, but, um, Audrey and Ella Griswold, is that her name? Um, Ellen, Ellen, that's what his name is, Ellen Griswold, um, and basically, um, because they're split apart, um, he doesn't get to see him that much, and he decides that he's going to take him on a road trip to uh, Wally World, um, which is home to Marty the Moose. And so they get this, um, they get this car, um, I don't know what the model is, I'm not good with cars, but basically they set out on the road to basically bring their family closer together and basically um, have a good family time. All the while, um, all the while, um, insanity ensues because uh, you have uh, Christine Brinkley as this woman of Ferrari. You have uh, Cousin Eddie, played by Randy Quaid. Um, you also have um, so much stuff that goes on from Aunt Edna, played by Imogene Coca, and... So, and Sandy ensues, and now it's up to the family to actually work out their differences and actually give themselves and give the entire family in the car the greatest vacation they ever had. Will they be able to do all that for 2,460 2, miles? Or will, they, or will that 2,460 2, miles be wasted of yelling, screaming, and pretty much a road trip of a long, hard road out of hell. Had to do that. But National Lampoon's Vacation is a great film. As I said, Harold Ramis really knows, gets the idea of a road trip and what it's like to be with the family and really come across insanity and really just come get to the point where it's like I want to go home but unfortunately it's like we're close like stop whining like he really gets that idea and I think a lot of families whether they're on a road trip or whatnot have really experienced that or even girlfriend or whatnot have really gone through that experience and I really love how he approaches that I really love how he does it in a way even though yes it is our rain there are some some really kind of the jokes that you wouldn't want kids to see it still feels it still feels realistic and it still feels like subtle it really feels the characters feel subtle about their reactions to this trip the characters feel like they're they're willing to get to this park to be a family even though they have an incident that occurs but i really love how he portrays um, the dilemma of being in the car for so long and really just going through the most over-the-top situations that any family would experience on a road trip. I mean, it might not be as over-the-top as this, but it's still, 
it still, for anybody there, might, um, I think it might, anybody would experience that. Yeah, but, yeah, I really love the story. I love how realistic it is, its approach to the road trip and the family, how it goes through it and whatnot. And I thought it was really well done. So, the story's definitely well done. Harold Ramis's direction, I think, is really well done. Um... The acting is solid from everyone. Chevy Chase in particular, this is the role that I remember him most for. It's the role that, to me, defines Chevy Chase. I think this is the Chevy Chase that I miss. Because um, later you do Vegas Vacation, and you would do that stupid talk show, which lasted for only one season, even though he was making fun of nothing but trouble on that. I really miss this Chevy Chase. I really wish he'd come back and do, like, what he was, what made him funny. But... This film, what I like about his character in this film is that he's just a normal dad. He's he's not what he's doing at Fletch and whatnot. Um, he's just a normal dad trying to bring his family together. And it, and everybody in his family is just so, doesn't want to spend time and acts like a jerk towards him. It really is like, no, I don't want this to go through. I don't want to go on this trip. I think we should fly. But he's just a dad. I think any dad would act this way. Any dad would be like... We're going to go on this trip, we're going to enjoy it, and maybe we'll, maybe God help us, we'll get together as a family and actually see, uh, see what the world has to offer instead of flying. But I thought he did it really well, and even when he has that blowout at the end, I think any father would have that. Any father would have that. We're 10 hours, fun, bark, and you want to bail out. You know, this isn't a vacation, it's a quest, a quest for fun. I'm going to have fun, you're all going to have fun. We're all going to have so much fun. We're going to need plastic surgery to remove our god smiles. You'll be whistling zippity doo. How are you? Oh. Even for as over the top as it is, it's easy to see any father reacting in that manner. And I know no father would react that way, but the reaction to what the situation is, I think any father would react that way. That way. Um, and I still think he did it really well. Um, Beverly D'Angelo, I thought, did a good job as the mother. Um, definitely, definitely the mother wants to make stuff easier and see, and is really prone to a lot and whatnot. Um, still thought she was well. She does get nude from time to time, so because I know there's people who find Chris, who find Beverly D'Angelo hotter in this film than Christine Brinkley. So if you find her hotter, here you go. She's she's topless, <laughs> but I thought she did it well. Um, her role, her role is just the typical mother and whatnot. Um, Imogene Coke, I also thought, did a good job, even though her character is a little bit of an unlikable kind of know-it-all who's like, hey, with this and with that, and she joins them to drive to Phoenix and whatnot. I still thought she was well done. Um, uh, definitely has some moments with her, um, like the part where she has, wants to get out of the car and Beverly D'Angelo fires back at her and... Clark is like, I don't want to take her with us and whatnot. And it's like, and it's like, you know, like insanity between the two. They set up this rivalry and whatnot. But it doesn't last that long in the film. And it's not like it dwells upon it. So, yeah, still like, still thought she did a good job. Randy Quaid as Cousin Eddie, which is like the first time we actually see him. He wouldn't appear in like European vacation, but he appears in... Uh, Christmas in Vegas. Here, though, I think he's the most laid back as opposed to, like, Christmas Vacation and whatnot. He seems more laid back and more, like, calmer than he is in the new, in Christmas. Because, I don't know why, but here he just feels more laid back and more, and more kind of, like, more kind of, like, caring. Because there's one part in it where we find out he's going through debt and he has to pay for, um the house and he asks him for money. I thought he did that real I mean I really wish they did that kind of Eddie again. Even that one scene where he's talking about the bank he's, and he ends it with oh, he drinks a beer and he's like, You want a beer? And he, he drink and he gives him the one that he drank out of Clark. I still thought that I thought that was hilarious. I miss this Eddie. This is out of the Eddie's, the performances by Randy Quaid, this is my favorite one of his. I, even though I love him in Christmas Vacation, I still think this is my favorite one of his. Um, 
The other actors do their parts really well. Christine Brinkley, who was hot in the film, definitely has a good scene in the pool with him. Ah, oh, cool! That scene was hilarious. You gonna go for it? Um, th I thought she was good. I and mean, this was her breakout film. And, of course, later she would go on to be with Billy Joel and whatnot. But, yeah, this film, to me, I what I love about the film is not only the cast, but the energy the film has. It's funny. It never gets boring. The jokes are definitely R-rated. Something I think European Vacation failed to do was B. Has this kind of... Had, this kind of sense of humor, which they throw out the window for like a PG-13 rating, which I feel was unneeded because this film did it really well. I don't know why they had to go with the PG-13 rating, but I not to say I don't like PG-13 films, which you'll see in a video, a few videos, I'll talk about some PG-13 movies that I enjoy, but I feel this one had more, uh, had like while um, an adult approach, it still felt like, you know, like, it still felt like a tame kind of I subtlety to it that I feel really made the film work. And it wasn't just all like, say, Animal House, which was more R-rated. This one just has a subtlety to it that keeps it from going like a kind of hard R. But overall, I think it really works. Granted, there's some nudity in it, but back in the 70s, you know, we had films that are like PG and they had nudity, like... Talk about the first Superman, where super when you first see Superman as a child, like comes out of the thing, you see his penis. So that's not bad. I don't know what is, but there's definitely some hilarious moments. The moments with Eddie and his kids, I thought were hilarious. Um, I like the part with John Candy where they break into the park, and he's like, and he gets a BB gun because it's closed. Just so many memorable lines in this film, from like cousin Eddie or that part at the the cowboy bar, yo. Yo, chicken wings, move your turkey legs, or whatever it's called. Um, hey, underpants! Like, when they're making fun of the guy, he pulls out a shotgun. Just the great energy to this film. And in terms of cons, I really can't find anything that's wrong with it. I really can't. I mean, it's shot well. Harold Ramis does a good job shooting, like, that desert part. Um, um, definitely, you could tell that hat, with the small budget, they used it wisely. So, overall... I think this is a really well-made film. If I can't think of one, um, I will say, um, I will say, um, I can say, um, I did feel the daughter character was a little bit unnecessary because we have the idea of like the sis, the the son, and like, um, and him and the daughter like why not have like another son for him to be like Ugh, on and just give that like but in a time or if you're gonna have the daughter character get a better actress because this girl annoyed me i just felt like it was unnecessary to have a boy and a girl clash why not have it two boys or whatnot but while it kind of made thinking about it now it kind of makes sense but i really feel that the daughter kind of felt unnecessary well, I, should, I don't know what I'm saying, but um, I do kind of feel like it could have been played better. Like, the da the actress who plays the daughter could have been better because the daughter annoyed the heck out of me in this film. Let's, I'm going to be honest there. I really tried to be nice, but, you know. But overall, National Lampoon's Vacation is a classic, and it's definitely a film, if you have not seen, I highly recommend you check it out. It's a classic, sick, uh, definitely... Um, definitely one of the best road movies out there. If you're looking for a good old-fashioned road trip movie that really defines family and whatnot, definitely check this out. Definitely, it defines, like, how much fun a road trip can be. And it's just a fun movie. So either way, highly recommend you check out National Lampoon's Vacation. It's classic. So either way, I give National Lampoon's Vacation a 9.5 out of 10, and it deserves it, and therefore gets my seal of approval. Definitely a film I'm going to watch a lot in the future. If you're looking for a great road movie to watch for a trip, highly recommend you check out National Lampoon's Vacation. Just a classic. But that's my review for National Lampoon's Vacation. And next time, I'm going to do a review on another road film. And this one in particular, I'm going to review for another reason, because I plan to watch um, the prequel um, in a few weeks. And... It is Dumb and Dumber. Um, this is the old edition. Let's talk about this edition in another video. But anyway.
yeah, that's one film I plan to review. Also plan to review uh, Beavis and Butthead, Do America, The Blob, among many others that cannot wait to review. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of National Lampoon Vacation. Do you guys like it? Which one is your favorite in the franchise? Um, hopefully, I can get to those in the future because, as I said, this got sequels. And I'll talk about them in the future. But for right now, be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. You're clear.